I was looking at my box of bifaces after taking three days off from napping, and a lot of people, relatively speaking, uh, requested that, that I nap this one. So I'll nap it. Yeah, it's good to take a few days off. I like the four days on, three days off thing for flint napping. If I only take one day off a week, I, uh, I feel better, but my joints don't get rested up. My brain might be okay, but my joints need about three days. So let's try this one. And my back too. That, the joints include my spine, I suppose. Yeah, because I'm hunched over many times. Uncomfortably so because of my need to wear my reader glasses and my reader glasses are magnifiers, right? But they don't work that far away. Like I can't be sitting straight up and then having this set up um, in focus uh, because of my readers. So I'm all crouched over. Now I can have a, a device that brings this rod higher up but I can't get very good results this way because the uh, it's it's a little bit more sloppy as far as the support. The knee holds or behind the knee it holds this rod a lot better. I suppose I could put my my noggin to work and come up with a good support mechanism for the horizontal punch. Right? Yeah, I can try. It just wouldn't be the same. It just wouldn't be the same. I've tried it already. Oh, yes. I've been doing this a while. I've tried many things. So what is this material? It feels like a, a failed heat treat experiment. Failed because it's not really that easy to nap. Uh, it probably needs more heat. It is nappable, but I'm having to strike it extremely hard. Um, this particular piece was given to me, so I don't, I don't really know. It looks like West, West Texas shirt and by west texas i don't mean uh almost west I'm, I'm talking about big bend area or uh in between big bend area and el paso that far west i've seen some guys show me some stuff they got from west texas but it it doesn't look like this Looks more like Edwards Plateau shirt. Or one of the gravel shirts. Anyway, this, this looks like it's one of the truly West Texas type stuff, although I can't be sure. It's got fossils in it, right? Yeah, but it's not quite as bad as uh, raw coral, raw petrified coral. It's, it's um, kind of in between raw petrified coral and really nice West Texas heat treat. Yeah, but... Uh, Steel is my friend with this tough stuff. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I can power through all sorts of stuff. That's why I use it. It's versatile. I can tap, tap, tap really gentle on glass or obsidian, and it works. Or I can just knock the living daylights out of this. And there's no... It's not... 
Any worse for wear? Nope. And like I said in my tools video, my most recent one, it does not it does not work better overall than copper. No. I'm not saying that because I'm promoting copper. It's a concession, you know. I, I have to admit that copper works really good. Yeah. But I can't smack it this hard without having to seriously redo the tool tip. There it goes. Seriously rework this tip after every napping session. I don't have to work this tip that much. I just have to sand it down or grind it down a little bit. Sometimes I can even take my artificial abrader, knock off all the All the little bits of stone that get embedded and knock back all the lumps. It's okay if it's, it's cratered and stuff a little bit, <coughs> as long as it's not overly so. As long as it's not, it's not overly cratered. Yeah, C R A T E R E D. Cratered, like the lunar surface. Tips get cratered like the lunar surface because every time you strike really hard, it's like a meteorite impact. Yeah. Okay, so. <clears throat> yeah, I'm rested after a few days. I'm rested after a few days. I've got some side projects I want to get done before Thanksgiving. I want Actually, I want to get all my side projects done. Before Thanksgiving and then move on to the next the next phase of what I'm doing off camera what's the next phase I'm getting a lot of these the next phase is anything but side projects yeah I'm getting this kind of um, scoop out on good stuff, bad stuff, and in between stuff. Um, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to bite off more than I can chew. When that happens, I'm I'm trying to dig dig out more than I'm supposed to be digging out. Yeah, that's just being a little bit too aggressive. But I want to get rid of that turtle back. Gonna have to be aggressive, yeah. So that's one of the side effects. Let's see if I can do some damage to that turtle back this time. Or maybe I should pay more attention to how that platform is developing. And maybe make it better. I can do better. Yeah. It's a good slogan, you know. Do better. Ooh, no, I wish it all did that. Yeah, I wish it would do that no matter what. So, so good. Yeah. Those big bolt flakes, so good. There's inconsistencies in this particular piece. I think that's probably why you guys picked it, or why many of you picked it. Because it's one of those things that lots of, lots of people encounter. Inconsistencies. And they're a pain in the butt. Yeah, they are. I'm not going to lie. Let's see what it did. Well, that's not too bad. Yeah. Not too, too bad. It's okay. I can lower the platform even more and have it do better than that. Yep. Why don't I why don't I do it perfectly every time? I must irritate lots of people when I do that. When I don't do it perfectly every time and I know what I should be doing but I don't do it. Yeah. 
But I've looked at enough artifacts to see that that's what they used to do. They didn't do it perfectly every time. Not on all of, not on all the artifacts. There are some point styles that, yeah, they were very meticulous. Very meticulous. Trying to do everything just right every time. There are some artifacts like that. Yes, I have to concede and admit, acquiesce and submit. Yeah, and acknowledge and admit. that some of the artifacts are made with very, very careful flaking, perfect platforms every time, on material that's carefully chosen. You don't mess with the nasty stuff. And the final product is very efficient, very beautiful, and very much in demand. It could probably even be used as money. That's how good they were. That's how beautiful they were. Yeah. But not all of them. In fact, most of my artifacts are not like that. I'm willing to acknowledge the exceptions. And if you have a beautiful point that has extremely nice characteristics, it goes against everything that I do or say. I'm not going to deny that. No. I'm not going to say, ah, you're just making it up, dude. I'm not going to say that because I know. I've seen them. I've seen beautifully made artifacts. Yep. And they were probably made with simple, natural tools. And how did they do that? How were they so perfect without copper? Even though copper culture is a thing in the Americas before Europeans. Yeah, copper culture was a thing. Copper was used for ceremonies. They used to make little bells out of them, little tinkers or whatever they call them. Yeah, beads of copper. I mean, all kinds of stuff made of copper, including awls, A-W-L-S, and pressure flakers, and various other pointy things with copper, arrowheads sometimes, probably knives, yada, yada, yada. But yeah, all this, I digress, right? All this because there are perfectly made beautiful artifacts, yeah. And uh, if you are upset by randomness or it makes you want to hurl to see imperfection on video, you know, just make some perfect points. It's perfectly okay. There's not one method for all the points in existence. Yeah. People ask, how did they used to make those back in the day with simple tools? How do they do it? The beautiful ones with simple tools. How do they do it? I want to know. It's bugging me so much it keeps me up at night. Yeah. I want to know how they made them. How, 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 how? And I want to know how all the cultures that were separated by time and distance did it separately. How did they learn to do it? Because they were all separate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's keeping me awake at night. Just tell me. You got five seconds. You know, and tell me like I'm five. Explain to me like I'm five how they used to make them in all these different cultures. With simple tools. The beautiful points. With perfect flaking. With simple tools. Okay, go. Practice. P-R-A-C-T-I-C-E. -E. Practice. You want me to tell you like you're five? Oh, man. They were made with lots of practice. There's no way around it. You can't 
substitute. You can have natural talent and ability, but unless you practice that talent and ability, you can't make them. You can't make that kind of stuff with simple tools. A lot of times, I think, my opinion, the tools were not so simple. An advanced skill looking point probably had advanced skill applied to the making of their tools as well. Not just the, the you know the stone tool that they resulted in, or not just the stone tool that they made, but the tools to make the tools. The tools to make the stone tools were probably also sophisticated to the same extent as the resultant stone tool. Makes sense. It makes sense that it would be a culture that was very into the technology, advanced technology for the time. Yeah. So, I mean, we could have a little rule that says um, the tools to make the tools were probably as advanced as the stone tools or at the same level of expertise they were made to the same level of expertise as the stone tools the napping tools were made to the same level of expertise as the resultant stone tools i think it's safe to say so that means different cultures had different levels of technology they weren't all done the same way and guess what we don't really know how they were done we know different methods that they that could have been used but we don't know exact methods that were used and we will never know exactly but to explain it like your five they made them the beautiful ones after lots of practice this that's the only thing I can tell you that would be true, no matter what. I know for sure that it was because they had lots of practice. I know that for sure. That's the only thing that I know for sure. I don't know for sure that they used indirect percussion. I don't know for sure that they had simple tools. I don't know for sure they had complex tools. I don't know for sure that they were seek out the best material every time. I don't know anything for sure on how they were made back in the past. Nothing, nothing, nothing for sure. Other than it required lots of practice. I know that for sure. So there you go. But just because some of these artifacts look crude doesn't mean there wasn't a lot of practice involved in making those crude artifacts. There could still have been lots of practice. There's just some other reason why they look crude. Maybe they were done quickly. Maybe they were done with substandard or subpar material. Maybe they were made under low light conditions in little hovels with no light. They did it by lamplight. They had a culture of working on this stuff at night or in, within the lodges that were very dark. So they really couldn't see much with the little oil lamps or whatever that they had. And it didn't really matter. It was good enough. But they still had high levels of skill. On and on and on and on and on. We can, we can construct and hypothesize many different possibilities. So yeah, I don't get that question too much anymore. How did they do that? How did they do them? Probably because I always come up with the same answer. I don't know and nobody knows. They don't like that. Should be able to tell me something more than just practice. You could tell me something more than that. It's gotta be something more than that. Something satisfying. Something I can sink my teeth into, and uh, put under my pillow and sleep nicely. Yeah. 
write it on a piece of paper, put it under my pillow, and sleep nicely, because now I know how they used to do them. Yeah. I know, I know how it is. Yeah. I switched over to a smaller flaker because I need I need to do something a little different because I'm not receive I'm not doing too good on this. So maybe more precise hits will give me more accuracy and better results. How's that? Oh gosh. I'm hitting into a, an inconsistent area. So what that means is I got to lower that platform, make it or lower the edge so that I have a better looking potential platforms yeah it's gonna mess with the symmetry I'm gonna have to symmetrize it later it's a new word yeah you guys keep track of the vocabulary okay I don't want to lose track of my vocabulary I'm coming up with all these terms and I'm forgetting them remember symmetrize it after it's all delumpified Okay. Ah. <laughs> Is that good? Let's see. A rating of one out of ten. How does that edge look? One out of ten. Well, it's about a three. Cool, man. Yeah. Cool. Because as long as it's better than zero. Yeah. Really? No, I just. I just don't want to do any more to it. Don't feel like messing with it. It's good enough. The, the edge. It's good enough. It doesn't need to be perfect, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. P E R F E K. Perfect. Perfect is a term you use instead of perfect. Because if it's perfect, it's good enough. It's not quite perfect. It's just good enough. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I didn't always talk like this. Before I had kids, well, I can't say that. I was very goofy. But... After you have kids, yeah, you get you start to loosen up a little bit, you know. If you don't go the other way and lose all your lose all your patience, you kind of loosen up a little bit. Join in the fun. Yeah. Start being goofy. So I'm getting to the point where I've got a, a not too bad preform, not too shabby, although it breaks really weird in the middle. That's that's pretty typical of uh, heat treat. It is easier to nap, but you, the side effect of being easier it it breaks in weird ways. I'm gonna try to shave that off with a flake or two. So it'll be nice and smooth. Yeah. Oh. Okay. See, if I put pressure on it like this, like sometimes I want to, it'll slip and I'll hit the workpiece. I hardly ever apply pressure. That's the main reason, is because it'll slip off and I'll hit the workpiece. Luckily, this is um, tough because that might have snapped in half just then. That really, really bugs me. The only thing that bugs me more than hitting the workpiece accidentally is breaking the tip off. Yeah. I really, really do not like hitting the workpiece accidentally. Okay, here we go. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. What can I make out of it? 
I don't know. I've been working on, I did one on the side here on this uh, agate basin looking thing the other day. Just before I stopped napping for those three days. I think I did this on a late, late, late Sunday night. It might have actually been the last one I did on Sunday or I might have done it Sunday afternoon. I mean, Monday afternoon. I'm going to work more on these um, agate basin or angostura hell gap types, you know, these um, late paleo, transitional paleo, because they are very cool. Uh, and they have, a lot of times, patterned flaking. And if you're one of those people that likes perfect, 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 just work on these, these uh, transitional paleo or late paleo types. Cody complex, agate basin or angostura types, you'll be happy, yeah? Just look at those on the internet and they'll make you happy. Oh yes, especially the uh, Cody complex, the, the Edens, they'll make you very happy. Very regular flaking, very regular preforms. Why do I say preforms? You can see between the regular flakes you can see how they develop the edge on the Edens. Very minute, extremely careful, little bitty flaking along the edge before the big bold flakes to create that median ridge. Yeah. Buy some casts, C-A-S-T-S, -S, casts, and look at the Edens and the Cody complex points, the ones that are you know, collateral flaking or, you know, regular flaking. You'll see. They'll make you happy and you'll be able to sleep knowing that um, they were making those things back in the day. And you can kind of know how they did it. Because sometimes the final flaking can tell you a lot about what the nappers were doing yeah there are some archaeology texts that insist that uh, we we are missing a lot of the flint napping process because we can only see basically the end products on many of these artifacts we don't see the preforms and the bifaces of that particular point style and they they're like they're lamenting that, that fact. They're bummed because they don't get to see the whole process. And they say, well, the ending process is just part of it. We don't, there's a lot of information missing because we don't see the beginning process. Well, there really isn't that much information missing. There really isn't. Because there are so many different ways to develop a preform, different methods, different tools, that there's no way for us to know it anyway. There's so many different options. We don't know for sure. Even if we found a whole set, you know, the napper just was making a bunch of stuff in a production line and then cached it all together. So we got finished points, we got starting nodules and everything in between. Even if we had that, we wouldn't know exactly how he made it anyway. So many different options, but in the, la in the later stages, the last stages, that's when the skill, the true skill of the napper is put to the test, the finishing stages. So the, la the later stages, contrary to a lot of these articles and studies on artifacts, Re the later stages reveal a lot about the napper and the napping process. So going back to these Cody complex points, we see the later stages, the later stages. There are lots of pristine examples. So it, it helps us to understand the culture, the napping style, the amount of practice required, Sometimes even what tools 
may be capable or not capable of doing flaking like that. Through experimentation by constructing these really nice regularly made points with natural tools and, and so forth and so on. Yeah, so we don't really lose too much by only seeing the end stage. We don't lose that much really as far as knowledge. Because, uh, yeah, developing the preform for a Cody type or a Clovis or an archaic or even a late prehistoric point, developing the preforms is pretty much the same in all of, the, all of those. It's the final finishing that separates the different cultures. Okay, in many cases, not in all cases. In some cases, cultures develop their preforms in a specific way. I, I recognize that. All right, I'm gonna I'm going to finish this out and show you the true skill in the next segment. Okay.